Hi, this is Dr. Larry Tranel, Extension Dairy Specialist with Iowa State University in Northeast and Southeast Iowa. I tend to think, based on research and personal experience, that everyone should be grazing dairy heifers. But we realize dairy producers vary in their goals and desires, their labor and management resources, and their crop land accessibility. So even though it makes both production and financial sense, we realize that rotational grazing may not be for everyone. Our objectives and what I'm about to share are first to give an understanding of goals in raising heifers for anyone, whether grazing or not, and second, to help us understand how grazing can help reach these goals. Third, to share practices for how to graze dairy heifers, and fourth, to share research to drive home the importance of grazing dairy heifers relative to raising them in confinement. Past studies have shown feed, labor, and replacements as the biggest three costs on a dairy in that order. The cost of raising replacement heifers, thanks to increases in feed costs and depending if custom raised or home raised, may change the order. But the bottom line, it behooves us to consider ways to reduce replacement raising costs, especially in the feed and labor that it requires. So quickly, whether grazing or not, what can a producer do to reduce replacement rearing costs? First, if the cost of raising is higher than the market price for sold heifers, which it often is, then only raise as many as you need. Second, recent research has proven the benefits of doubling the birth weight at weaning. Third, increasing the growth rate throughout the growing period, but caution that heifers don't get fat. Breed at a younger age to reduce first calving, and here's where grazing comes in to utilize more economical feed sources, and if managed properly, rotational grazing can provide your cheapest forage source per pound of dry matter. Will grazing help reach goals? For this list of common grazing goals, grazing may or may not affect calf weight gain birth to weaning. Grazing can increase average daily gain depending on management. Studies have shown grazed heifers to have significantly less health issues after calving, in addition to producing more milk in the first lactation. All this, plus a good potential to significantly lower feed, labor, and other costs, make grazing a pretty good option. But if not controlling weeds, it may not be pretty. And if not getting desired weight gains, it may not be good. However, heifers raised on pastures, like shown in the picture, make grazing a pretty good option. So bottom line is rotational grazing equates to more milk, healthier animals, and less costs, so what's not to like? Well, not every producer has labor or management ability that can handle the flexibility needed day to day to deal with muddy or hot conditions, inconsistent rations, or dealing with the fencing and watering system, or have an affinity for grazing or skills to deal with bloat and possible cattle in a neighbor's cornfield because somebody forgot to shut the gate. Notice the two-strand high tensile fence. This is typical for perimeter and lane fences near cropping areas, especially for younger heifers. So let's take a look at the basics of grazing heifers. This picture shows before and after grazing residual of about four inches, which is crucial for regrowth because the growing point on the plant and the ability of the plant to photosynthesize due to the remaining residual. Thus the residual is very crucial with taller growing cool season grasses. It is less crucial with bunch type grasses. Also shown is the polywire reel and the pigtail pose for effective and simple movement of temporary fencing. It takes about two to three minutes to move a fence within the same paddock. This group of heifers pictured gained 1.8 pounds per day with a one pound of a grain, mineral, vitamin, and ionophore supplement. Each acre supported 1.8 head of 800 pound heifers for the seven and a half month grazing season near Dubuque, Iowa. This system has been replicated by a Minnesota producer attaining almost the exact same results. To maximize use of pasture resources and to distribute manure most evenly, the use of both a front fence and a back fence is used. The front fence is considered the feed wagon and allows a smaller amount of forage to be grazed reducing waste. The back fence is the manure spreader that helps distribute manure into a smaller area. Heifers in this system are moved once or at times twice per day to better distribute manure and a more efficient harvest of the pasture forage. Pasture lanes are built as high and dry as possible to allow runoff in faster drying lanes. Water lines run the lanes and are sleeved in PVC pipe when crossing the lanes or are buried. The width of the pasture lanes can vary from eight foot to whatever width needed for machinery. 
However, the narrower the cheaper, as machinery can always be moved by dropping wires. Refrain from using steel stakes for electric fencing if possible, even though a cheap steel stake corner post option is exhibited here. Notice the two-strand high tensile lane wire on the left. Dirt lanes will tend to erode over time, so a simple lane system uses geotextile fabric covered with three to four inches of road gravel and then four inches of limestone. Equip help pay for this lane exhibited. The lane slopes from the high side to the low side to allow water to run over it, not down it. This lane, when dirt, previously eroded badly with very little slope over time. Thus, water bars made of dirt or treated lumber at 30 degrees across the lane are somewhat necessary to assist water runoff from the lane. This lane is made of concrete at five foot width because of the sensitive muddy area it's in. Producers have made more durable lanes at widths of 26 inches to eight feet using concrete, blacktop, road screenings, or other more durable material. Though more expensive for heavy use lanes, they may be the most cost effective in the long run due to less erosion and less maintenance. When asking what species are best for grazing, the responses greatly vary. A goal would be 35 to 50 percent legume to provide 100 pounds or so of nitrogen naturally, but bullet becomes more of a concern with legumes if not properly managed. If a grass sod is desired, plant a grass-based sod. The golden rule is to focus on varieties of certain species. Thus, plant a mixture of good varieties. Are there good and not so good varieties being sold of all the popular species? Heifers have been successfully grazed on a multitude of pasture mixes. Grasses and legumes can be stockpiled for very late fall grazing. Typically in Northeast Iowa, pasture grazed or harvested mid to late August are allowed to regrow into the fall without losing much quality up until the end of the year. This is a very effective avenue to extend the grazing season, depending on snowfall, of course, up to late December. Now let's move on to the health benefits of grazing. Minnesota researchers have shown significant differences in health incidences when comparing grazed heifers in the first two columns here versus confinement raised heifers in the column on the right. A Cornell study on two different farms also showed significant difference between grazed and confinement animals for the same types of health incidences as on the previous slide. In addition, calving ease was better for the grazed versus the confinement raised heifers. Add to the health benefits, Wisconsin research showed the pasture raised heifers can have as good or higher average daily gain and about 1,913 additional pounds of milk production in the first lactation. In addition to health and milk production benefits, reducing costs of raising average size heifers by grazing added up to $189 over the grazing period. And adding stockpiling for a 200 day pasture season with the thought that each heifer could actually average 1.5 grazing seasons over their 23 months of rearing gives 300 days on pasture, which doubles the difference per heifer. So consider even a herd of 60 heifers calving per year at $1.26 daily savings per heifer times 300 days would save $22,680 in rearing costs annually. This could be a total cost savings of 12 to 20% or possibly even more per heifer. This comparison shows the returns to labor and management per acre for a dairy heifer enterprise. The big variable is what is a pound of gain worth? When heifers are high priced to purchase, the value per pound of gain can be considerably different than when heifers are cheap. Bottom line is that in 2015, when heifers are high priced, the return to labor and management per acre can well outcompete crop enterprises. But again, remember, there are other non-feed cost reasons on top of this yet to raise them on pasture. Often producers are unsure of what it costs to raise heifers. So based on Wisconsin data for 2013 on the cost of raising heifers, 2014 feed costs were about 75% of the 2013 cost. So costs for the various weight ranges decreased as they did again in 2015. Year 2015 costs are estimated here with the assumption that feed costs are only 60% of the 2013 cost. This spreadsheet is a slide rule. So estimating a 700 pound heifer costs $2.18 daily 
with a 10 cent slide down for every 100 pounds and except for the breeding time frame where the slide is close to double. I realize this is difficult to see, but Iowa State University Extension has a heifer raising budget that can be found at the following website at www.extension.iastate.edu slash dairy team. Dr. David Combs, UW-Madison dairy scientist, shared the following guidelines for supplementing heifers on pasture. Notice as heifers approach the 600 pound range, very little supplement is needed for heifers consuming high quality pasture. But also notice in all of this that pasture dry matter intake is not limited by sward density or paddock size. So thus, if we're raising heifers on good quality rotationally grazed pasture, it can go a long way in reducing feed costs. So bottom line, here are some take home points. Again, we want to know your cost of raising replacement heifers. We can use the ISU dairy budget as a guide and we realize that grazing can significantly reduce cost. In especially times of high priced heifers, raise only your best heifers unless your operation is growing. A big goal is to strive to double that birth weight by 56 to 60 days and strive to breed at 13 to 15 months and trying to calve in that uh, 23 to 24 month period. So utilize intensively managed grazing when possible, but please understand and know that grazing's health and milk production benefits in addition to their lowing cost. So if we know grazing's health and milk production benefits and how significant that is in addition to reducing cost, we've come a long way into understanding the economics and just the practices of grazing dairy heifers and its importance. So appreciate that and thanks for watching.